Uh, I'm going to be talking about the importance of women empowerment and um, combating gender-based violence. Uh, it gives me a great pleasure to address you here at The Hague under the theme that without women, a family cannot become, as the Sutu is saying, uh, what that practically means um, is that a woman is willing to do anything at all costs um, for what they actually want. So I want to make an example with um, the ANC Women's League that we have back in South Africa. There's a woman who was called um, Teresa. Uh, this is a women's organization and um, all kinds of women from educated to non-educated to uh, whatever background that they might, may come from. Uh, what Teresa did is that uh, she was made the minister without portfolio and she had never received any kind of um, education, uh, whether basic or advanced. And this was to prove a point that, you know, with her resilience and hard work, irrespective of that, that she actually managed to do that and make an impact. Although many international uh, human rights engagements recognize that women and men are equal and deserve to be treated as such, extensive discrimination against women continues to exist. This discrimination against women violates the principle of equality and causes many problems for women and society. According to the Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of um, Discrimination Against Women, discrimination prevents women from participating equally in the political, social, economic, and cultural life in their country. It harms the growth and development of the family and society, and it makes it difficult for women to reach their full potential in life. Where there is poverty, women suffer the most as they are the last to receive food, health care, education, training, and opportunity for work. In order to stop this discrimination, as mentioned in the convention adopted by the United Nations General Assembly, South Africa and other states must take steps to promote equality between women and men. They must create a new economic order based on equality and justice, remove apartheid, all forms of racism and racial discrimination, strengthen international peace, security, and cooperation so as to promote social progress and development. Um, I'd also like to talk about the special help for rural women. You get a lot of rural women uh, in South Africa um, that need to do all the hard labor, like fetching water, and they're never really involved in anything substantive. So rural women must, help, must be helped with special problems that they have, rural women play an important role in making sure that their families survive. Rural women must be able to participate in development planning and at all levels. Uh, that is, government must try to involve them, not just plan for them, uh, but make them an integral part of uh, decision making, benefit directly from social uh, security programs, organize self-help groups and cooperatives to obtain equal access to economic opportunities, participate in all community activities, have equal access to loans and credit for farming, marketing, and technology. And when I'm talking about farming now is um, with the recent you know, land uh, expropriations, uh, people claim land and they never really know what to do with it. And there's this uh, thing going on that, you know, there should be compensation, or there should be expropriation without compensation, meaning that you should take the land as it is and try to develop it and um, make profit out of it, uh, except uh, where you find that land is claimed, but then, uh, like, for example, uh, there's a man called Tommy Van Sale. Now he owns uh, farms and all these citrus farms that grow oranges, uh, tomatoes and stuff. So uh, somebody had a land claim against him, but he's one of the biggest um, 
tomato exporters actually in the world. And now they don't have any plans for that land and it has to be cultivated on an ongoing basis. So in such circumstances, then compensation can be made. So this is to just give an example of a typical woman who would probably have stayed in the rural areas and um, is fighting for chieftaincy, which is the position now that one has to have. And the government usually gives uh, such a person money like um, the subsidies and to develop such a uh, lens. So South Africa must take steps to assist rural women and to stop any customary law practices which discriminate against them. For example, the practice of polygamy or marriage to more than one woman should be stopped. Customary laws which provide for the inheritance of boy children also discriminate against women and girl children. These behavior patterns almost always lead to gender-based violence and the oppression of women preventing them from being individuals. A Women's Charter of South Africa calls for rural women to be able to take part in decision-making bodies in traditional communities. Um, marriage and family life. Uh, South Africa must help single women with uh, the responsibilities that they face. Access to education, jobs, and childcare centers must be available so that single mothers can support themselves and care for their children. Uh, harnessing cultural and religious diversity to combat gender-based violence in South Africa. South Africa is a culturally diverse society, including diverse white and black communities. All have prejudice which lead to gender-based violence uh, and abuse of women and children. There's a need for educational programs to root out these prejudices from society and promote the Bill of Rights. Uh, structures are not rooted amongst uh, communities to educate men and women about the importance of women's and children's rights. There's a need for human rights education focusing on women's and children's rights. During apartheid, there was a institute called NIPILA, National Institute of Interest Law and Research, which was funded by the EU, the European Union, Swedish uh, Save the Child, USAID, which established the Community Law Center, and 13 legal service centers, which were situated in an educated community about the rights of women and children. NGOs that were amongst people were short of money and stopped work which they did amongst communities. Great neglect of human rights education amongst communities. Community-based cent advice centers, which were supported by the Community Law Center in Nipla, were also closed down due to a lack of funding. The deepening moral regeneration and social ill, including femicide, domestic violence, violence in school, motivated me to re-establish the Community Law Center, which is the CLC, which is housed in the Kara Heritage Institute in Pretoria. The Community Law Center, however, is not able to re-establish community-based advice center, uh, centers because of a lack of funding. Uh, thank you for listening, and I hope I have brought an awareness to this issue so that you will leave enriched and enlightened tonight. <laughs>